Good morning, Willowbrook. So excited to be back with you in our 21 days of prayer. And as you remember, we've been praying for missions, but we're also praying for Christmas Eve. And we're just a few days away from when we'll all gather out at uh, Milton Frank Stadium and we'll fill the stadium up. But the thing that I'm asking you to pray for is not that we'll have numbers there. That's not what we're praying for. Please pray that we will cause such an excitement in heaven by the number of people that get saved. We're baptizing that day. If you know of someone that wants to get baptized, they'll never forget they were baptized on Christmas Eve at a football stadium celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Let's look into Luke chapter two for just a second. I wanna point out something you may never have known. It says in Luke chapter two, and there were shepherds living out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night. Now, they were in the fields nearby. Now, why did, why did the angel go to the shepherds? You've heard a lot of pastors who've probably said because, you know, the shepherds were the lowly, they were the outcasts, they were dirty, the lowest of society. A shepherd was not even allowed to go into the temple. They were able to keep the temple flocks the te temple sheep so that they could be sacrificed, but not even allowed inside the temple themselves. Now that's been preached for generations, but that can be true. But there's also a, a different thought. You know, Jesus did come from the low, for the lowly, for the downcast, for the outcast, the up and the out, but there's something called the Mishnah regulations. And Luke in chapter two, is pointing out that they're doing temple duties. They're in the flock nearby. Now, the only one who could perform temple duties are the priests. Now, the Mishnah, those are oral documents. You have the Torah, you have the, well, the law, you have the Torah, and you have the Mishnah. And the Mishnah documents, well, that, that's what governed the people during the times of the Pharisees. And one of the things that the Mishnah documents say is that no one could keep a flock of sheep anywhere other than way out in the wilderness. Now, the only ones under the Mishnah documents that were able to keep sheep nearby, nearby the city, nearby the, the uh, you know, Bethlehem's just outside of Jerusalem. And so to be right near Bethlehem the only ones that could do that were priests, and they kept the priestly flocks. They would look out for the sheep because they wanted to make sure that they were not attacked and they were unblemished. And so the shepherds, some people say, must have been priests. You see, they were there to, to make sure the sacrifice for the Passover was okay. You know, another statement in the Mishnah, it's revealed in the Migdal Eder. Now that's another Jewish document, translates, and it means the tower over the flock, which means that an actual tower stood over the, the priestly fields and a priest would be in the tower keeping watch over the flock by night. And then the shepherds, the other shepherds, the other priests would be on the ground ready to pounce if there was a threat to the sheep there. And so he stood in that tower night after night after night watching. So while the, the shepherds were, were ready to protect, we can say, did he come to the poor and the outcast or did he come to the priest keeping watch over their, their flocks? Either way, the Christmas story is a great story because Jesus did come. And the angel did announce to shepherds, and we do know if you're feeling outcast today, if you're feeling like you're just nobody special, understand that even before Jesus was born, God knew your name. God knows who you are. God knows your situation. And Jesus came to, yes, shepherds, the lowly, the downcast, because even the priest keeping watch over the shepherds, if that is all fact as well, then we know this. They were still stinky. They were still dirty. They had to be cleaned in a special way to get into the temple. So either way, Jesus came for the up and out, and he came for the down and out. He came for you, 
and he came for me to provide for us salvation. And so we celebrate that this Christmas. We celebrate what God does. And God came, and he was the spotless lamb. And those shepherds keeping those lambs, taking them to the Passover so they could be sacrificed. The angel announced, the real lamb has come. And you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Celebrate Jesus, our Savior, our King. You know, today we want to pray over some new missionaries. We're going to have a team going to Madagascar. It'll be a, a medical trip to Madagascar. They're going to go probably maybe late April or into June, July, late June or July, if you're interested. Let us know because I'll connect you with the trip lead and uh, you can be a part of that team. But the missionaries they're going to be working with are Mark and Amy Phillips. Mark and Amy Phillips in Madagascar. You know, one of our trips in the past when we used to go to Madagascar, the missionary was showing the Jesus film, and they invited all of the villagers to come to the Jesus film. And during the filming, the field right next door where they were showing the Jesus film caught on fire, and they had to rush everybody out. You want to talk about Satan fighting the word, getting out to people who've never heard? He'll start a fire next door. Listen, Mark and Amy, they are out, they're reaching people and medical teams are going and that, that's one way that we can help treat their, out, their inward sicknesses, their outward sicknesses, but we can tell them about Jesus who can heal them spiritually for all of eternity. So pray for Mark and Amy, pray for their family, pray for their kids, pray for their protection. Pray for their wisdom. Did you know in Madagascar, they don't celebrate Christmas the way that we do. It's not a time for gifts. It's not a time to just gather with family. They gather, the Christians do, as a church family. And they will spend the entire day, an entire day, singing and praising God. Listen, pray that those kind of events are successful and that others in their villages will want to know why these people are so very happy, even when they have nothing. So pray for Mark and Amy, pray for the team that will go to Madagascar. Thank you for praying for all of our missions and our missionaries, and thank you for being faithful during 21 days of prayer. Now we look for the fruit and the answer of our prayer on Christmas Eve, and we look for the fruit and the answers of prayer for all the ones we've been praying for. Willowbrook, we love you. God bless you. Merry Christmas.